everybody, welcome back to EC Details, Eddie Cologne. I, today I'm so excited to share with you, I will be using a brand new polisher on this car. So with that said, let's... Eddie, 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 it's a new polisher. That means you need to do a bit of work on it. What kind of work are we doing? Right? Well, it's made in China. And the Chinese, they occasionally make something good. But when it comes to putting grease in a machine, eh, not so much. This is Ivan. Ivan LaCroix. Okay. Yeah. So walk me through this. I never put grease inside of a machine before. So this uh, polisher was actually sent to me as a, we want you to test it. So I do that with a lot of chemicals and products and machines. They sent it to me. And this one's actually worth my time. There's some of them that, <laughs> no. I love the color, I mean, the color speaks to me. Yeah, I know, the color. You go into his house, this color is everywhere. But anyways. So, start off at speed one. It's a relatively quiet machine. Is that on? Yeah. <laughs> it's on, man. Stay quick, but uh, that's the pad washing speed. That's the internet speed. Yeah, right? That's England. Yeah, that's the pad washing speed. But, inside the gear case here, every tool I've seen, not just Japanese, there are some others, they don't have enough grease, A, and they don't have good quality. So I've always seen people do this online. Right. The one thing I struggled with is like I just bought this. Yeah. For like 190. Say I bought it for 200 dollars, right? Right. I'm not putting grease in. I don't even know what to do. Right. Well, so now you will. So what's the first step in taking like putting grease in? And why would we put new grease in? Well, we're putting a better quality grease. Okay. It's actually going to stick to the gear, making it smoother, quieter, and also last longer. Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. So step one, we take the tool. Right. So step, step one is unplug it from the wall. <laughs> <laughs> We're safe. Safe. Practice safe sets. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So most of these polishers, they're all relatively the same. They have a front cap on them. The cap is held on by these little screws here. And these little screws, what they do... There goes the nickels here. That's, and yeah, and that's where you put the bail handle on or the side handle that no one ever uses. I don't know why they include them, but they're there. So we take this off, we're good to go. Now you'll see that this tool, oh, that looks nice, did not have a button on the top, but it has a place here to put a wrench when you're changing your backhand plate. Okay. Most of the Chinese tools, the button is actually there. It's hidden under the cap. Okay, and this button is like when I put the backhand plate on, press yeah. it, boom, got it. Right. Now, if you like this, the uh, painted uh, aluminum look, that's nice. By all means, you can keep it this way. We should coat that. Yeah. We will coat it. But yes, you can use it like this. Now, the next step is we want to separate the gear case in two pieces. And generally, the gear case will have four screws like this at the top. Let me, let me get close with that, Ivan, because when you're looking at this right here, this has four screws right here. So I just want to make sure you guys see it. And then, so Ivan, when those four screws come out, things apart, I'll put a little scratch somewhere around here so that I know that I'm putting it back in the right orientation. This one, because of these three divots, we only have one orientation we can put so it in. these right here? The, well, the three little marks that are here. So that will allow us to make sure we're putting it back in the right orientation. So, fun fact, anytime you take tools apart, what he's doing here is he scratched it and we're about to take the screws off. Yeah, this one I didn't scratch because of these little marks. That makes sense. But generally, I would. So I'm just going to loosen the screws before removing them completely. So I, I kind of want to make this, uh, everyone, this is Ivan LaCroix, I know I said that already. Super excited to have him. Tomorrow we have a big day, so he's prepping us for tomorrow's rotary day. Yeah. And do you do this with all Chinese polishers or just all polish in general? All polishers except for one company. <laughs> wait, wait, should we just show them the company I think? Well, it's Flex. <laughs> uh, Flex, they put the right grease, they put the right quantity of grease, it's perfect. So you don't need to worry about this. Every other polisher I've had, no matter what the origin, be it Chinese, be it Taiwanese, be it European, American for that matter, it needs grease. When's the last time you've seen an American made polisher? Was Porter Cable American? Yeah, Porter Cable was made in the USA. Uh, and I used to work for Porter Cable, that's why I know all this crap. But anyways, so we pull it out. Oh. Now we can see that on the gear itself, there's no grease. Yeah, that's weird, look at that. Yeah, 
And these three little dots are where the, the lock, act. so you see the little lock pin here? Yep. So, and this white grease, uh, some people think it's a lithium grease, it's actually not a lithium grease. I don't know what this grease is made of. So when you say lithium, what, 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 what does, what's the difference in grease, I guess? So when I look here, what, what do I get when I go to like Harbor Freight? Harbor Freight, you're gonna go and buy some Lucas Oil. So brand name in here, I know that's not my thing. But it's any channel is brand name. Okay. Yeah, no, uh, Lucas Oil, red and tacky. Red and tacky. Yeah. Okay. And that last, let me just the components last one, right? I think. Yeah. So we're gonna dig this old grease out of here. You want to be gentle while you're doing it. You don't want to scratch anything. Now this particular tool actually has a ball bearing in the bottom. Some of the cheaper tools will just have a brass sleeve down here, so in the center here. Some of them will have uh, a roller bearing, uh, like an eagle bearing, and then this one has a ball bearing. So actually good quality. So bearings everyone look bucket list item I have item fixing stuff in the garage <laughs> this is my, my bucket list item and if you guys don't know Ivan his, his history is nuts man the guy has been it's been awesome the last couple of days I've been let's just say I've been around the block a time or two so there are areas in this gear case where the gear where the uh, grease hasn't even touched. There are areas where there was a buildup of it, but a lot of it, it was never touched. So when we do this here, Ivan, like uh, how much of the grease do we really want to get out? We want to get out as much as we can. We're not, you know, being anal about it. We're not going to be detailing the interior of this, but we want to get as much of this little white stuff that they call grease out of here. That's gnarly. Man. Look at that color, guys. So and you can see there's already been metalware for the little this machine has been used because of the lack of lubrication. So then, what's a cool tool to use if you know the screwdriver's not doing it? Well, what would be your second go-to? These little things. Ooh. So these are great for cleaning vents. But look at how it's just squeegeeing out this old grease. Let's look at that again, the squeegee in. Just picking up all that nasty old grease. Look, you take 30 minutes to do this item, how long will the tool last us? It's gonna last a lot longer, but more important than that, you know, not that not lasting long is not important, it's going to be quiet. So we took a decibel reading of this uh, tool before starting, and at this point, Eddie's going to be inserting that footage. Playing the video, Eddie. Play the video, okay, stop sucking. A quiet home. When I talk, we're inside a car, or a quiet street, normal conversation. When we start the machine up, speed one. <laughs> 79 decibels on average. 80, 79, so. Inside the car. Speed six. So this is before the modification. And at low speed, it was what about 60 decibels, if I remember correctly. Yep. And, and that's not that high, right? It's like you and I talking together. Yeah, exactly. At high speed, it was at 96 decibels. That's a lot. They, uh, so the app that I have for reading the, the decibels said it was equivalent to a food blender. A food blender. Yeah. For eight hours straight. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you're blending your smoothie in the morning, sure. It'll take a few seconds and you're out of there. But after that, mm, not so much. So we've got the majority of that old grease out of there. That's good enough for me. The little, the little bit that was on the gear, we'll take it <laughs> off of here. I think you had four gear, look at that gear, Adam. Yeah. Let's use and abuse, it's brand new, huh? Yeah, so not much there. And how many times would you suggest someone 
who wants to keep polishing. You know, we do a lot of uh, paint correction that we, you know, change the grease out. Once a year. Once a year. Tool maintenance versus tool buying. Yeah, once a year, change of grease. Uh, check your brushes, make sure they're moving properly. Let's get rid of this old grease here. And we had a grease gun. Oh, 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 it's down there. Right here. So we're going to add new grease now. We have Lucas Red and Tacky in here, and you'll see why it's called Red and Tacky. It's red and it's sticky. And we're going to fill these cavities in. So we don't want to leave airspace. We want to have enough grease in there that it's always in contact with the gear. I, is this going to make you a better polisher? Not at all. <laughs> it's going to make you a more relaxed polisher because you're going to have less noise and less vibration. So my neck doesn't feel like I'm being tortured? Yeah. Now, with a dual action machine, this is virtually the same. So at this point, once this little gear cover is off, the dual action is the same inside. So now we're going to fill the cavity of the gear itself with grease as well. So the cavity is the middle part, right? We don't want to fill the middle necessarily that inside point, just around it, right, sir? Right. Well, actually, it's inside the bearing we don't want to fill. Okay. So don't pull an eddy, fill the bearing. You want a little bit of grease inside that bearing, but you don't want it filled to the point where um, you can get a high block. Now, are we doing the edges sir? Yeah, we're going to throw a little bit, bit of grease in here. And we're good. Uh, spin it one more. You got it, sir. Seems that our grease gun is out of grease. Thank the Lord. Hey Perfect guys. timing. Real life here. Real yeah. life, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, spread that grease in there. Spread it in here. And then we'll put it back. Now remember, we had those three divots, so that's backwards. Obviously, it doesn't work that way. Look, it fits. Wipe off my grubby, greasy fingers. <laughs> I've been the And reassemble. So when we reassemble this time, and I think it's important right, to tell them, right? We don't want to tighten it like a gorilla. No, no, no. It's finger tight, right? Finger tight. You know, you don't want to get your impact wrench on here. Uh, get it in. I'm going to do just like you would tighten a set of wheels. Star pattern. For the, us uh, newborns? Yep. Star pattern. <laughs> for the, hey, for the newborns? Listen, star pattern. You're not tightening your wheels one level at a time. No. There's no point in them. So, there, 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 there. And I'm just basically depositing the screws, or they're just touching, and then I'll go around and twirl. And again, not a high pressure, not a lot of... So not a lot of... Uh, Getting it done like you're in a rush. Just take your time to do it right, you know? Yeah. So there's that. And wipe off a little excess grease around the edges here. Who wants a greasy ball? You know, some people love the grease. Yeah. Now, other things on a polisher while we're at it. Some the grease. Let's get it off the street over here. Your brushes. So tell me more about a brush, because I hear brushless, and if you're not a tour right. guy, what's the value of having a brushless polisher? Well, a brushless polisher, the great value of that is higher torque and less wear. So a brush, this is taking the electricity coming through here and putting it into the armature in the center there. So that little brass piece that we see in the bottom. Mm -hmm. In the armature, and it's translating or putting that power down. So the brush, this actually wears over time. So when it's worn down, it stops. 
So the cable here limits the travel of the brush. So you can't have the brush damaging the armature. I just learned something today. And a lot of tools, when you buy them, they'll have a brush, uh, you know, spare brushes in the packaging. So you want to keep those spare brushes for your time. And it's nice to have a tool with externally accessible brushes. Another thing you can do with a polisher, and this happens frequently, let me just take the side cover off. What happens with these polishers, and this is a squeaky scoop, it's like my Christmas night, place. There you go. So, you'll have, especially the people that take their cord and wind it around the machine. Is that good or bad? Okay, that, we see that on YouTube right here. Let's talk about this. Look, I broke my Rupes because of this, okay? Yeah. So basically what you're doing is you're putting a lot of tension on this and the cord eventually breaks somewhere in here. So when you tie your screw, when you tie the cable around the tool, yeah. you're causing damage to your polish. Actually, if you're wanting to do that tie it around the tool yeah. stuff, make a larger loop at the end. So at the end, you just make a larger loop yeah. and then tie it around the polish. And some cords have these neat, some tools have these neat little velcro straps. Should we use them? That you should use. <laughs> now, the other thing you can do, one of two strategies here, and it'll change whether you're shop based or mobile based. And the reason I say that is in a mobile unit, you don't want big cords hanging around everywhere. No. And you don't want to carry a lot of cords. So, what I did with my mobile unit polishers is I would actually cut them right here and put a plug on. So, you'll cut where? Somewhere around here. And just put a plug So, I just left like a six inch plug, six inch cord on the machine. And I had one extension cord in the mobile unit. Well, that's nuts. So you're saying that you modify your polisher that it had a plug here yeah. for your mobile unit and we plug it up. Right. Now in the shop, we kept a 35 foot cord because 35 feet is long enough to get around just car. about any car. Yeah. Unless you live in Montana or Idaho and then you drive semi. Yeah. By the way, Ivan, um, you won't get around your bus. No. <laughs> bus is 46 feet long, so. <laughs> but <laughs> Ivan's bus is bigger than my house. The guy is parked next door and it looks like two store. it's huge. This bus is phenomenal. So once we have this off, we see that there is the cord clamp here and the cord going into the switch. Of course, we're unplugged, remember, we're unplugged. So if this cord is acting up that you can do this and it turns the polisher on and off, on and off, on and off, just cut the cord shorter, strip the wires and put them into your switch. And this is the switch I need? Yeah, this is the switch. There's two little screws here that hold these wires in. Very simple to put in. That's a good looking polisher. It actually is. That's real good. Yeah, they've got good wire management. Um, it's well put together. So we'll just put this back on. And we'll do the sound test. I'm excited for that. Everyone, it's, uh, it was my goal when I was uh, asking Ivan if he could show me how to do this, was to learn how to put this together. Because I watched it online, Ivan, but I was nervous to take it apart. Yeah, there's nothing to be nervous. And literally, he did it with what? Four screws, some patience, and then a little know how. Yeah. Oh, you taught me something with the plastic pieces. Like when we're screwing stuff inside of plastic? Yeah. So when you're screwing screws into plastic, that have been already screwed in. So if these are not on the uh, Try talking over that. Yeah, try talking over that. So let me take one of these screws out here. So these are this type of thread of screw. They're a very aggressive thread. So what we want to do with these screws is before screwing them down, we actually want to back, and when you back it up, you'll feel a little notch. Like a drop, right? Yeah, and when you feel that, you know that you're in the previously cut threads, so you don't have to cut new threads. And then, that's just common. I, I didn't know that was common sense until I got caught. <laughs> that noise is good. <laughs> yeah. But we know the screw is tight. Yeah, it's working, baby. Get in there. And I know we all have the cordless drills and screwdriver attachments. Yeah. Use it for taking it apart, but refrain from using that for putting it back together. Now we're going to put the lovely little cap back on. And this cap, 
If I didn't have the cap on, would I be okay? Yeah. Okay. It's just more comfortable for your hand. For, yeah, for the side of it, right? Yeah. And the other thing that the cap does in this case is directs the air. So we have air coming out of here. Right here. Yeah, coming out of here. Well, this, it comes out the side already. Right. Comes out there. We have air that's coming out here, blowing at this. This cap is actually capturing some of that air and cooling this off. Yeah, and the cool tool is a nice tool because you don't want that crap out to be cool. No. So. Guys, I've never done this in my life. I usually just uh, give it away and buy a new one. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. We're back together. If you can plug it back in, my dear sir. You got it. Wait, huh? Two decibels at six, Ivan. Yeah. And the other thing that we've done is we've actually changed the, the sound. We may not have reduced the pressure, the sound pressure or the noise, but we have reduced, we have increased the quality of the sound. It sounds better. But would you a lot quieter. Yeah. So, yeah. So yes, you're getting what you're paying for, but still. It sounds amazing. Not a bad little machine. Let's hear it again. Look, it sounds amazing. And we're only going to be polishing at one, never two. No. We're never going to go past this. Well, yes. So, speed one is for polishing. Speed six. For cleaning your pads. Or for causing a tornado. Yes. To cause a tornado. Cool. Okay. Now, as I end just about every video on every channel, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, leave them below. If you have not subscribed to this channel, what the... Excuse me. You heard the man. You heard him. Subscribe. What are you waiting for? I mean, this is a great channel. You Eddie it. is a great guy. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Thumbs up. You know how to do it. I've seen you do it before. You can do it again. Thank you everyone for watching. Dream come true. Clean your polishers. Help a brother out. We're out.